Some days, Rarity really wondered why she loved her mare friend so much. This was definitely one of those days. I can't believe you did that. She glared sourly at the object of her affection. Woof! Applejack frowned and swallowed the piece of apple she had been chewing on, oblivious to the small speck of apple pulp that still remained on her cheek. What did I do this time? What did you do? Rarity snapped. I'll tell you what you did do. Here I was, discussing my new collection with Hoity Toity, when you, Applejack, stormed into my boutique with mud on your coat and branches sticking out your vein, kissed my cheek, and loudly declared that you... Gotta borrow the care real quick, nature calls. Hey, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Applejack shrugged. <sighs> That's not the point. Rarity groaned through her teeth in frustration. Would it kill you to try to show a bit of tact and consideration? At least when you decide to drop by the boutique? Is that really too much to ask? Applejack rolled her eyes. Look, I just don't see what the big deal is. You know I don't care what any pony thinks of me. But I do! It has been very well established that I do, in fact, care what other ponies think. Especially when you seem to go out of your way to embarrass me and in front of hoity-toity of all ponies! Applejack jerked as if stung by something. Then her expression darkened. Oh, really? She said in a low voice. I'm embarrassing, Emma. Yes! Rarity yelled. But then she saw the look on Applejack's face and realized she might have gone too far. I mean, look, I understand I can't change who you are, but I just wish you wouldn't be such a... She trailed off. What? Go on, Rarity. You wish I wasn't such what? Rarity bit her lip. Yes, she had definitely gone too far. Applejack, please. <laughs> nah, I get it. Applejack interrupted. You think I'm an embarrassment? Scylla Applejack, the embarrassing country bumpkin. That's me. Oh, you're fine with having me for a mare friend when it's just us. Y'all just don't want to be seen with me in public, huh? She turned away. But not before Rarity saw the tears in her eyes. You're ashamed of me. Rarity gasped, and her own eyes teared up. <gasps> how, how can you even say? Save it! Applejack snapped and headed for the door. I ain't in the mood for your silly dramatics. I'm going home, for I embarrass you anymore. Applejack, wait! But it was too late. Applejack had already slammed the door shut behind her. Alone, Rarity remained frozen in her spot, her lip quivering. Then she stomped the floor hard with her hoof. Applejack! You! You naked poop! <laughs> she stormed into the inspiration room, with tears flowing freely from her eyes. Throwing herself on her bed, she curled up in a ball and cried deeply. A desperate, unladylike bawling that sent painful shudders through her entire body. She hiccuped over and over between the convulsions. Stupid! Stupid! Applejack! But after crying into her pillow for several minutes, the worst pain seemed finally to have passed and Rarity felt somewhat better. Good enough, at least, to start feeling guilty about her own behavior. Applejack's words had hurt her deeply, but an increasingly vocal part of her wondered if she didn't deserve it. She had been the instigator of the fight, after all, and she managed to thoroughly insult her mare friend all for her own petty vanity. I'm in a stupid way. What was I thinking? Sitting up, Still sniffling, she wiped the fresh tears off her cheek and saw some of her makeup rub off on her hoof. <laughs> oh my! She whimpered, still not in full control of her voice. I, I look, look like an outright disaster!
Doctor! <laughs> she let slip a bitter chuckle. Even now, she kept fussing about her looks. Shallow and vainglorious rarity, who only cares about looking pretty. That is I. I'm so pathetic. It was up to her to fix this. She knew that. She had to go to Sweet Apple Acres and apologize. Beg Applejack to forgive her if that's what it took to make everything go back to how it used to be. Yes, that was precisely what she would do. But not right away. She was still too upset. The wounds were too fresh. And Applejack was surely still taking her anger out on some poor apple trees. Rarity would find her and apologize once they'd both had time to calm down. In the meantime, she still had work to do. In truth, she did not feel very inspired at all, but right now she needed some kind of distraction or she would just start crying again. She dragged herself out of bed, forcing herself to go through the motions. The fight had left her so distraught she could not even remember her schedule for the day. She shuffled over to her work desk and tried to bring some order to the clutter of notes and sketches. Did she have any more appointments today? Please don't let me have any more appointments today. She picked up her calendar with her magic and threw a quick glance at it. Then her head snapped back around and she stared at it while her lungs drew a sudden, drawn-out gasp of horror. <coughs> a single name dominated the calendar's current date. She had written it in capital letters with red ink and underlined it three times. What? She shrieked, refusing to believe her eyes. But no! That's not... Is that today? How could she possibly have forgotten? This had to be a mistake. Maybe she'd gotten the dates wrong. Maybe yesterday had just been a dream and today was actually tomorrow. She quickly located her morning newspaper and double-checked the date. There was no mistake. Today was still today. Today was the day. This was the day Gala Glitterati would grace the carousel boutique with his presence. In fact, he'd probably arrive any minute now. <coughs> Rarity leaped to her hooves and scrambled to get ready her fight with Applejack momentarily forgotten in the panic. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Makeup! I have to put on new makeup! How does my makeup look? Brush! Where's my brush? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! It wasn't just vanity anymore. Looking presentable and giving a good impression was now a necessity. Hoity-toity was one thing, but Gala Glitterati was an icon of the highest order. In the world of fashion, his word was law, if he said something was fashionable, then it was fashionable, because he'd said it. Rarity still wasn't sure how he'd even heard of her. Perhaps Sapphire Shores or Photo Finish had happened to mention her at one of his famous soirees. Or maybe her status as a national hero was finally paying off. It did not really matter. What mattered was that this was Rarity's big chance to become a household name in equestrian fashion. Of course, if she screwed this up, she could count on becoming persona non grata on every social scene in the country forever. And that was why nothing, absolutely nothing, was allowed to go wrong today. Rarity got herself cleaned up in record time, disguising her puffy red eyes the best she could while reapplying her makeup and brushing her disheveled mane until it looked at least passable. There was no time to try anything extravagant. Had she remembered the appointment, she would have spent the entire morning preparing, but now the casual look would just have to do. When she was finally ready, Glitterati still had not shown up. Rarity thanked the spirits of style for fashionable lateness. With nothing else to do, she started pacing nervously back and forth, mumbling, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. Then it happened. The bell on the front door rang, signaling that some pony had entered her boutique. Buongiorno, and a thousand pardons for my tardiness. I ran into the most particular pink pony on my way here, 
and allowed myself to be distracted. You are Miss Rarity, see? Gala Glitterati was tall and lean, caramel-coloured and raven-maned. He was impeccably dressed in a blazer, shirt and scarf outfit that looked both elegant and casual. Simple, but offset by an extravagant fetlock watch and a pair of very expensive-looking designer glasses. Glitterati did not need to make a spectacle of himself like Sapphire Shores. He understood the importance of subtlety. Rarity stepped forward on shaky knees and tried to muster her most pleasant smile. Yes, and you are most welcome, Mr. Glitterati. I can't tell you what an honor this is. Nonsense. <laughs> I simply happened to be in the mood for something unusual for my next get-together. And I was told by some trusted friends that this quaint little town happens to harbor a genius designer. Oh, uh, I'm not sure I go that far. Rarity struggled hard against the desire to squeal with glee. Well, why don't you come on in and we'll discuss the details of your commission. To Rarity's relief, Glitterati certainly lived up to his reputation as a gentle cult. He was well-mannered and pleasant to talk to, not nearly as snobbish as she had feared he might be. More fancy pants than Jet Set. As they got to work comparing his wishes to Rarity's own ideas, the fashionista slowly started to relax. As expected, Glitterati knew what he wanted and gave Rarity certain specific instructions but at the same time, he allowed her leeway for artistic expression and encouraged her to be creative. Aside from his exquisite taste, she marveled at how much he seemed to know about the craft itself. In short, it looked as if everything would miraculously go according to plan. Once they had ironed out the details, Rarity started taking Glitterati's measurements. And that was when the doorbell chimed a second time and Rarity heard Applejack's familiar voice call out. Um, Rarity, we need to talk. A cold shiver went down Rarity's spine, and she felt a hard lump of fear in the pit of her stomach. Oh no, not again! Not now! Uh, Applejack, this isn't really a... She looked up and fell silent, her mouth agape. The Applejack who had entered the boutique looked so different from her usual self that for a split second, Rarity thought she was somepony else. Her coat was spotless and almost seemed to glow with a golden sheen. Her mane and tail had been brushed and intricately braided, and she had traded her everyday red ribbons for green ones, which Rarity knew for a fact were reserved only for special occasions. Even more shocking, Applejack was not wearing her hat, which was almost unheard of. Instead, she had chosen to wear an elegant hairband, resembling an olive branch, matching the ribbons. And was she wearing makeup? Rarity was speechless. She already knew Applejack cleaned up nicely when she wanted to, but the farm pony would normally only consider such a thing under exceptional circumstances, such as the Grand Galloping Gala, a royal wedding, or the coronation of one of her close friends. Not on a Tuesday. At first, Applejack seemed entirely focused on Rarity, entering the room with a determined look on her face. But when she noticed Glitterati, she suddenly stopped. She gave the stallion a bashful look. Oh, Pardon me. I wasn't aware you were entertaining a customer, Rarity. Please don't mind me. I can always come back later. Rarity blinked. What? Oh, there is no need for that, Signorina. At least not on my account. <laughs> Miss Rarity, won't you please introduce me to your lovely friend? Um, of course. Rarity still eyed Applejack in confusion. Applejack, this is Gala Glitterati. Mr. Glitterati, this is my mere friend Applejack. It still felt a bit odd for her to be so open about dating a mare, but then it was hardly a secret that Glitterati preferred stallions himself. 
Che bello! It is a pleasure, Miss Applejack. Glitterati smiled. Applejack gasped. <gasps> oh my! The Gala Glitterati? Oh, the pleasure's all mine. Rarity has spoken very highly of you. Now, I may be biased, but I dare say you shall not regret doing business with her. When it comes to fashion, she is without a doubt the most talented opponent I have ever met. Rarity still could not believe her ears. What? Indeed. Then I presume you are quite the fashionista yourself. I can tell you are a mare of good taste. Applejack's smile did not falter, but for a brief moment her eye twitched ever so slightly. Me? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not terribly up to date on such things. Though, when spending as much time with Rarity as I do, one can't help but pick up on a few things. <laughs> I would imagine so. As the two kept chatting, Rarity silently continued with her measurements. Her motions were mechanical, though, as her racing thoughts focused on the bizarre turn the situation had taken. She had no idea why, but by some kind of miracle, Applejack had apparently picked this particular afternoon to suddenly metamorphose into a proper lady. And that was a good thing, wasn't it? Rarity should have been relieved, grateful, even happy that her lover had finally decided to raise herself up to her own high standards of conduct. So why wasn't she? Why did she still have that gnawing feeling of anxiety and panic inside? Why did this feel so wrong? Why? Why does hearing her talk like that hurt so much? So tell me, Applejack, what is it that you do for a living? Applejack's eye twitched again. Ah, uh, I am in the catering business. Yes, I manage a lot of catering. Oh, I see. That's why. I say, you two must make quite the couple then. Glitterati carried on, seemingly oblivious to the hesitation in Applejack's voice. Uh, what is the name of your firm? Perhaps I could hire you for my upcoming soiree as a well. Make it a two-for-one, so to speak. More eye twitches. Uh, well, that is to say... Applejack! They both turned to look at Rarity, who blushed when she realized her outburst had been louder than intended. She put down her measuring tape and turned to the stallion. Mr. Glitterati, I'm terribly sorry to ask this of you, but would you mind waiting here for a few minutes? I would like to speak with Applejack in private. Uh, but of course. Glitterati gave her a graceful nod of approval. Please, uh, take as much time as you need. Thank you! Be right back! Rarity more or less dragged Applejack into the workroom, closing the door shut behind them. Left alone in the main room, Gala Glitterati smiled. Ah, l'amour. To be young and in love. Looking around, he noticed Opalescence sitting on a table, washing her fur. Approaching the cat, he reached out a hoof to pet her. Here, kitty, kitty. Opal hissed and swiped her claws at him. Closing the door behind them, Rarity immediately turned to look straight at her mare friend. Applejack, enough! That's enough! Do you hear me? You can stop now! Why, whatever do you mean, Rarity, darling? Said Applejack, with just a hint of an edge to her false Manhattan dialect. Stop it! Rarity's voice turned pleading. Please, Applejack! No more! Proved your point! Applejack looked perplexed and a tiny bit offended. Rare? Uh, I, I ain't trying to prove a point. I came here to apologize. You. What? Rarity blinked. Uh. Applejack sighed, turning her eyes away in shame. I said some downright awful things to you, Rare. And I understand if you hate me now. But after I left back then, I did some thinking, 
and I realized y'all were right. Sometimes I'm just not considerate enough. Not to mention as stubborn as the day is long. I gotta learn to be more mindful of your feelings if we're gonna be together. And I... I still want us to be together, Rarity. So I came here to say I'm real sorry about everything I said. She hung her head. Got myself pretty up and everything. I, I thought maybe you'd like it. You're beautiful, Rarity whispered, her eyes tearing up for the second time that day. Simply beautiful. Applejack blushed. Uh, anyway, when I saw that glitterata fella, I figured I could make up for my other blunder if I brushed off my old Manhattan manners for a spell. I'm not a complete idiot. I know how much this deal means to you. Rarity stared at her. You... you did all that for my sake? Well, yeah. That's what you wanted, ain't it? No! No, no. I mean, yes, I wanted you to be more considerate, but this... this is too much! It's killing you, Applejack! Now, let's not get all dramatic again. Don't deny it! Rarity looked straight into Applejack's eyes, her brow furled. This is what they did to you, isn't it? Your aunt and uncle? They made you ashamed of who you were and tried to turn you into some vapid, shallow little dress-up doll, and you hated it. You still hate it. Do you really think I can tell? How do you think it makes me feel to know I made you do it all over again? Applejack frowned, looking down at the floor again. I don't mind if it's for you. Rarity gently touched Applejack's cheek, lifting her face so they were looking at each other again. She leaned close, resting her horn against Applejack's forehead, and whispered, Applejack, listen to me. I'm touched you would go this far for my sake. But the pony I love, the Applejack I fell in love with, would never compromise herself. Never try to be some pony she's not. That integrity and strength is what I really love about you. Not how you look or dress or talk. I still want us to be together as well. But I want my Applejack. I want the real you and no pony else. Rare? I... I don't know what to... Oh, shut up! Rarity kissed her. It was a very good kiss. In Rarity's personal opinion, it was one of the best they had shared so far. When they finally broke away from each other, Applejack had a goofy grin on her face. Hmm. So, um, this means we're okay? Hmm? I don't know. Rarity smirked and nuzzled her lovingly. Tell you what, come by later this evening and we can talk. Some more. <laughs> That'd be wonderful. <laughs> Speaking of wonderful, who did your mane? Granny Smith helped me. Did my makeup, too. Turns out the old lady knows all kinds of tricks. I think she might even teach me a thing or two. I shall have to remember to ask her. They fell silent for a moment, simply relishing each other's closeness. Then, Applejack sobered up somewhat. Rare, you do forgive me, right? I need to hear it from you. I forgive you, but only if you forgive me. I was an idiot too, you know. And please, promise you won't ever scare me like that again. <laughs> Rarity, you got yourself a deal. <sighs> Thank you. Now then... Let's not keep Glitterati waiting, shall we? They stole another kiss on their way back. <coughs> After three failed attempts and a slightly scratched hoof, Gala Glitterati had given up on trying to pet the cat. Rather temperamental, aren't we? He muttered, eyeing her with a mix of annoyance and respect. Opal simply glared at him. <coughs> Glitterati was relieved when the two mares returned from the workroom, and he immediately noticed something had changed between them. The previous tension was gone, and they both looked somewhat flushed, 
trading smiles and coy glances. He grinned. I take it all is well. How? Wait, yeah, I ain't kidding. Applejack beamed like a sun. Let me tell you, Glitters, I feel like the luckiest girl in Equestria right now. Anyway, I'd love to stay in chat, but I think it's high time for me to skedaddle. Them apples ain't gonna buck themselves, you know? She winked at him. Gala Glitterati blinked. What? Thank you for stopping by, Applejack, Rarity said with a warm smile. I'll see you later tonight, then. Rare, you bet your bottom lip you will. Applejack laughed, and then gave the stunned Glitterati a final nod. Happy trails, Glitters. Hope you like your threads. As the farm pony left the boutique, closing the door behind her, Glitterati turned to Rarity. I must admit, I am now utterly confused. (laughs) Try as she might, Rarity could not hold back her laughter. Finally, everything was back to the way it should be.